The next thing we're going to look at is how to troubleshoot our electrical systems. One of the things we have to understand is what's the difference between voltage and amperage. So the easiest way to figure this out is to use the analogy of water and water pressure. It's used many, many times. If you were to take a tank of water, like a hot water heater in your home, and you plumbed it to a faucet, and you put pressure to it, that pressure that's in the line is going to be voltage. Now as you turn on the faucet, and water starts to come out of the faucet, as it passes through and you get that volume coming through, that is going to be your amperage or your use of electricity. Now logic would tell us that if we have flow of electricity or as we open up the valve on our faucet, the pressure in the line is going to reduce because it's flowing. And that's true of electricity. As you increase the amperage and you start pulling more electricity, the pressure or the voltage of the electricity will go down. And that's a key thing to remember because all of the items in our coach require a certain amount of voltage or a certain amount of pressure. And if we can't keep the pressure up or the voltage up, then we're going to have problems. So let's illustrate the problems we can have and how they come about due to a lack of voltage. Imagine your coach is plugged in. When it's plugged in, your converter is creating power. It creates about 13.8 volts and it produces, let's say in the neighborhood of 25 amps as it charges the batteries. Now everything in the coach is going to pull a certain amount of amperage. They're going to need a little bit of water as it were. What happens is the air conditioner is going to pull 2 amps. The water heater is going to pull 2 amps. The refrigerator is going to pull 2 amps. The battery charger, the batteries are going to take maybe 10 amps. And we add all that up and it's really not that big a deal. And because we're putting more amperage into the system than the system is taking, the voltage stays up. Now, just imagine we have all those things going and we decide to run our slide out. And our slide out takes 15 amps or even 20 amps. All of a sudden, now we don't have enough amperage to power the whole system. And in that case, the voltage drops, which may not be that big of a deal, especially if it's not that much of a pull. But if the voltage drops too much, usually at about 11.7 or 11.8 volts, then some of our control boards begin to shut themselves off. So we open up our slide out and all of a sudden our air conditioner turns off or our refrigerator turns off. We don't know why. Well, because it doesn't get the pressure or the voltage it needs to run. Now, when you think about this scenario, the key thing to remember here, or the biggest variable we have, is our batteries. You see, our batteries accept the amperage and charge themselves during these situations. Well, if you have a bad battery or a weak battery, what it's going to do is it's going to become an amperage hog. It's going to just suck as much power as it possibly can into the batteries, but since the batteries are bad, it's almost like having a hole in that bucket and the power just goes right out the bottom of it. So you're sucking all this amperage into the batteries and the first time you need to have it for something else, it's not there. So typically when we start to see voltage issues, even though you're plugged in or even though the generator's running, the first thing we always look at is our batteries. If our batteries are sucking everything up, then we know we have bad batteries and that will remedy the cause. Second big problem in electrical issues is the delivery of electricity. Basically the electricity runs through lines and connections and if those lines and connections get broken, get cut, get corroded and blocked up, it, it doesn't allow the amperage or the flow of electricity to go to the item that needs it and then that causes us problems. So it's easy to identify if we have a connection issue by following the power. We go to the source and we follow all the lines until we find out where it doesn't go anymore and then we fix it. The problem is, is that takes time, effort, and it can be hidden in places that are just unfathomable where they could be. So if you have an issue like that and you can't find where it is, sometimes you need professional help. And of course, we're always here for you.